life in the wonderful world of science. Be prepared for a mind-blowing experience. Hello, I'm Professor Glue. Today, we will study the transport system in the human body. Hey, aren't you Professor Glue, the famous science professor? Yep, yours truly. Oh, hi. I'm one of your mechanical friends. I'm so glad to meet you. Ooh, thank you. But, uh, what are you doing here? I'm so sorry, but I really need to host this program. It's my favorite topic. You mean you want to take over? Uh, no, I mean, um, let's do it together. What? Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. I don't want to waste any more time arguing with you. Let's see who the best presenter is. Okay, let's begin. <laughs> I designed that robot, you know. <laughs> do you know what these are? They are blood vessels. And do you know how they work? Why, thank you. Let me explain it. Blood vessels contain blood. It is like a long pipeline in the body that carries oxygen and food to specific parts of the body. It is a transport system. Do you know how blood flows throughout the body? Shh! Can you hear that? That's the sound of blood flowing. Hmm, come on, let's take a closer look. Let me introduce you to the heart. What? The heart is a muscle organ that pumps blood to the blood vessels. The heart is located between the lungs. It is divided into four parts. Here, you can see that the atriums are in the upper part of the heart. Both the atrium are smaller than the ventricles and have thinner walls. You will also notice that the left ventricle has a thicker wall than the right ventricle. Do you know why this is so? It's because the left ventricle has a bigger job to do. It has to pump blood and oxygen all over the body while the right ventricle only pumps blood to the lungs. It's not that complicated, is it? Just imagine that the heart is a pump. Do you want to know how it works? I'll explain. The right atrium and the right ventricle are divided by a tricuspid valve. So too is the left atrium and the left ventricle. Semilunar valves are located at the aorta and pulmonary artery. Their job is to stop blood from flowing back into the heart. This is a pulmonary artery and that is the aorta. Both of these are blood vessels. There are three kinds of blood vessels that are used by the heart to distribute blood in our body. A 
um, sorry I had to cut him off. <laughs> Smart fellow, that Fronten, but he forgets who created him. What was that again? Mm, oh, yes, the types of blood vessels. There are three types. They are the artery, the vein, and the capillary. Arteries carry oxygenated blood away from the heart. The pulmonary artery is the only one that does not. Arteries have thick, muscular and elastic walls. This is to help them withstand the high pressure of the blood that is pumped out of the heart. Arteries can also become tighter or wider. Veins carry deoxygenated blood to the heart. The only exception is the pulmonary vein. The walls of veins are not as thick, muscular and elastic as those of the arteries. Veins have valves to ensure a one-way flow of blood. Capillaries connect arteries and veins. It is only a cell thick. A capillary allows materials in the blood to be exchanged with surrounding tissue. The low pressure in the capillary is enough to force some of the plasma through its wall. This plasma that has leaked out of the capillary is known as the tissue fluid. I knew that, but I'm going to take a break. I don't like the next bit. Yep, you'd better take a long rest. After this, you are going to be inside the vessel. The average normal heartbeat of a person is 70 times per minute. However, the heartbeat can increase when someone does a physical activity. Likewise, it will decrease when the person is at rest. We can measure our heartbeat by taking our pulse which is produced after every ventricular contraction. There are two types of heart sounds. This loud lub sound is due to the closure of the bicuspid and the tricuspid valve. This soft dub sound is due to the closure of the semilunar valve. which are moving to their destinations inside this body. Whee! The blood circulatory system carries substances from one part of the body to another. It transports oxygen from the lungs to the tissues. In the lungs, oxygen combines with hemoglobin in the red blood cells to form oxyhemoglobin. When blood reaches tissues that lack oxygen, the oxyhemoglobin breaks down and releases its oxygen to the tissue. The circulatory system also transports carbon dioxide from tissues to the lungs. It is carried in the form of hydrogen carbonate ions. Some of the ions are carried in the red blood cells while the others are carried in the plasma. The circulatory system also transports nitrogenous waste from the liver to the kidneys. It transports hormones from the glands that produce them to the parts of the body that need them. 
It also carries heat from the warm parts of the body to the colder parts. Woo! It's full of blood in there. I'll be safe out here. <laughs> ah, he's just showing off. Actually, he's afraid of blood. That's why he allowed me to present the next bit. <laughs> blood, blood, blood. Do you know what blood actually is? Let me show you. Blood is made up of a fluid component called the plasma. It is also made up of blood cells, namely the red and the white blood cells. And also platelets. The plasma is a yellowish liquid which constitutes about 55% by volume of whole blood. 90% of the plasma is made up of water. The other 10% of the plasma are substances such as hormones, dissolved mineral salts, food substances like glucose, excretory products like urea, and soluble proteins like prothrombin and fibrinogen. The red blood cell hasn't any nucleus, hence it is circular and biconcave in shape and contains hemoglobin. It is produced by the bone marrow. It has a small diameter of less than 0.01 millimeters. This enables it to squeeze through capillaries. It has a lifespan of about 3 to 4 months. The white blood cell is colorless and contains a nucleus. It is larger than the red blood cell. However, there are fewer white blood cells than red ones. It is able to move and change its irregular shape. The platelets are fragments of cytoplasm from certain bone marrow. Since know-it-all Professor Blue has explained blood and its properties, I, know-it-all and more, Trondin, will tell you about its functions. Blood transports oxygen from the lungs to the other parts of the body. In the lungs, oxygen combines loosely with hemoglobin in the red blood cells to form oxyhemoglobin. When blood reaches the tissues that lack oxygen, the oxyhemoglobin breaks down and releases its oxygen to the tissues. Blood also transports digested food substances from the intestines to other parts of the body. Blood also carries excretory products such as carbon dioxide from the tissues to the excretory organs. Hormones are also transported by blood. Note that oxygen is carried by red blood cells while digested food substances, excretory products and hormones are carried in the plasma. Certain white blood cells are able to destroy bacteria that get into the blood. Some white blood cells are able to produce certain chemical substances called antibodies. These antibodies neutralize the effects of toxins produced by germs that have entered the bloodstream. Platelets play a very important role in the clotting of blood when our blood vessels are damaged. Blood also helps to distribute heat around the body. Okay, now we will look at blood groups.
There are four different blood groups. They are A, B, AB, and O. The surface of red blood cells has special proteins called antigens. The blood plasma contains antibodies that occur naturally. The different blood groups have different types of antigens and antibodies. People in the O blood group are able to donate their blood to people in the A, B, and AB groups. These people are known as universal donors. People with the AB type of blood are able to accept blood from people in the other three groups, A, B, and O. These people are known as universal acceptors. If a donor's blood and the recipient's blood are not compatible, agglutination might take place and this can cause people to die. So, the donor and recipient's blood type must be determined before any blood transfusion is carried out. Ah! Talk-a-lot, Trontin, forgot to tell you about how donated blood is stored. Oh, really? Well, it's all yours then. Well, each unit of donated blood is usually separated into several components. The red blood cells are stored under refrigeration for a maximum of 42 days. Frozen red cells can be stored up to 10 years. The plasma can be kept in a frozen state for up to one year. Today, we learned about the transport system in the human body. Our focus is the heart, blood, blood vessels and blood groups. We call this the circulatory system. We have seen how this system works and functions within our bodies. We have also looked at the main functions of the heart, the organ that pumps blood. We have also learned about types of blood vessels, the artery, the vein and the capillary. Inside the blood vessels is the blood that is made up of plasma, red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets. Other substances that are transported by the blood include oxygen, carbon dioxide, digested food, hormones and heat. Furthermore, we talked about blood groups. We learned that they are divided into four types. A, B, AB and O. We also discussed about donor and recipient blood types. This knowledge is important not only to help us pass examinations but also to give us a better understanding of how our bodies work. Hey, wait a second. What do you mean our bodies? You are not a human, you're a robot. Oops, I'm sorry. Sometimes I forget that I'm only a robot. But I know of a cartoon character who thinks he is human. Uh, where? Is there someone else here? <laughs> oh, it's time for me to go. But we will meet again in the next episode with a new topic that explores another part of the human body. So stay tuned. Bye! Bye! Yep! 
If there is a next episode for you, I mean. <laughs> but we did do well together. Uh, maybe we could co-host the next program. Maybe. <laughs> 